1968, Ford Motor Company had a problem. Japanese car companies were flooding the U.S. with subcompact cars without any real opposition. Ford made no cars in the subcompact class, but Ford President Lee Iacocca was determined to challenge the Japanese in the subcompact market. He tasked his engineers at Ford to design and produce a subcompact car to challenge the Japanese. He wanted it fast and he wanted it cheap. The car, the Ford Pinto, was to be no more than $2,000 and weigh no more than 2,000 pounds with a design timeline of 25 months from drawing board to showroom. Normally that process takes three and a half years and it takes that long for a reason. For the Pinto, everything started out going well. Engineers had a design that looked all right and everything was proceeding on schedule. Then they started conducting crash tests on several different prototypes. The crash tests were pretty normal. Used to, the, used to see if the design complied with National Highway Traffic Safety Administration regulations, specifically new upcoming regulations that were meant to reduce the fuel leakage from the gas tank in the event of a crash. These regulations, set to go into effect in 1972, directed that the gas tank should be able to withstand an impact at 20 miles an hour, and in 1973, that speed would be increased to 30 miles an hour. These regulations proved to be a problem for the Pinto. Crash tests revealed that at speeds of even less than 20 miles an hour, the fuel tank could rupture, the strap holding the fuel tank in place would snap, and the result would be fuel, fuel spilling from the gas tank. Now the gas tank was located behind the rear differential and in front of the back bumper. Pretty much kind of where it is on normal car on regular cars today. However, in the event of a cra of a rear collision, the bumper would impact the gas tank causing the strap that holds the tank in place to snap. The tank would also hit bolts extending from the rear differential, which would puncture the tank. One crash test even showed that after a crash, the gas tank emptied itself in less than one minute. This was a problem for, for Ford. So they started looking at ways to fix it. They had lots of options, such as a rubber bladder in the fuel tank that would uh, keep the fuel on the tank in the tank, even if the tank was punctured. They thought about moving the tank above the rear axle like they had in the Ford Capri, or even having a, a piece of metal uh, installed between the tank and the bumper that would pretty much prevent the bumper from impacting the fuel tank. But options cost money. So Ford determined that the possible fix would add $11 to the overall price of each car. Remember, these cars were supposed to, supposed to be less than $2,000. And on that scale, $11 is a lot. Wanting to keep costs as low as possible, Ford started doing some benefit, some cost benefit analysis, weighing the cost of the fix to the cost of settling lawsuits from people who, who have been injured or killed as a result. They found that it would cost $113 million to implement changes to all of the cars, while they projected only $49 million from lawsuits. Given these numbers, Ford went ahead with, the produ with production in 1970. The NHTSA started 
an investigation into the Ford Pinto in 1974, looking into the strap holding the fuel tank rupturing and fuel leakage after a crash. But nothing really changed until 1977, when two big events happened that would force Ford's hand. The first was an article in Mother Jones. This article showed that Ford knew of the danger that the gas tank posed on the Pinto. And even more damning, they had the internal documents to prove that Ford knew about it, and then put it on sale anyway. With public sentiment turning turning against Ford, the second, the second big event happened. This was a court case in 1977 in Orange County, California, where a man named Richard Grinshaw was awarded initially $125 million for injuries sustained while he was a passenger in a Pinto. While he only got about $3.5 million, the initial award was set to show that Ford could have lost all of its profits made from the Pinto, which had been calculated out to approximately $124 million. These two events forced Ford to recall over 2.2 million vehicles between 1971 and 1976 and institute the fixes that they had normally that had not initially been proposed when Pinto was being designed. 